Welcome back to Here with Goldberg. Today we'll be talking about the passport apocalypse, which some people believe is ongoing or will occur in future based upon the growing popularity of the passport pro movement. I do want to note very quickly here, people sex padding or geomaxing has been going on for probably hundreds of years if you want to talk about the conquest of the new world, certainly for decades. It was slightly less common amongst black Americans, although I can remember probably 2008, 2010 timeframe, there was a video on YouTube of black men looking for wives in Brazil. So it has been going on. This is not the new thing to the block per se. You had naughty nomads swoop the world, happier abroad. And then that one guy who was from the Where the Wild Things Are book, Rouge V, that's right. The difference, truthfully, is that it's become more normified lately. You have to recognize, as I've pointed out before, content apartheid, segregation on the internet is largely dead. There are still niche communities. This channel is a niche community. I'm surprised I haven't been banned. I should have been banned years ago. I still should be banned. They took out Collected Diz. He had five or 600 followers. You're going, I don't know, maybe I'm just good with code words or I can play that right of return card. That's probably what it is. Regardless, Fresh and Fit, when did they become popular? 2020 to 2021. And that pioneered the podcast slash clips model. Always have something to talk about, whatever's trending. Even if you say, I'm a PUA channel, I'm a Tradcon channel. If you don't discuss these subjects, you will lose out on views, revenue, and a following. Because everyone's going to go where the next um, aspect in the block seems to be directing itself. And you even have black pill channels that have said to people, don't follow dating coaches, don't use game, go overseas. But then they complain about the outcome of these passport bros, which, as I said, again, it's normification. The last couple of months, I've had several normies I've known for a few years. You're like, have you heard about the passport bro movement? That's when you know, it's like that old saying, if the shoeshine boy is giving you stock tips, you know, the economy is about to collapse. It's bad. It's over. But really, where is the animosity stemming from when it comes to the passport bros specifically? Let's be real. Lower class American black culture has a negative reputation. This is not black people at all, per se, because it's the whole concept. If you travel, you should do as the Romans do. That's the old saying. This is lost on certain people, particularly, you know, the working class black community. There's that trend towards performative or peacocking demonstrations of status. So even if a guy doesn't have a lot of money, he's probably got nice shoes, fancy clothes, a car, a uh, high-end watch, because you have to flex in that manner. Same thing is true of Latinos in some respects, whereas you might see a East Asian or cream cheese dude that makes 200K, but wears ill-fitting chaps clothing and looks like a dork, a lot of it's culturally based. Middle class black people are less prone to this behavior, but because these dudes, of course, they get more attention because they try to make it rain, they wave cash around. They're the ones that I think have generated much hostility and perhaps with some reason. That being said, it can be easy to pick on black people because many have a negative reputation both here and around the world. It's not exclusive to them. Let's just be totally honest. You saw the first picture, obviously. You have the classic ugly American image from the 1940s, 50s Cuba, and I'm sure that Pravda exaggerated this trend a tad to benefit Castro's militia and propaganda, but there's probably a shred of accuracy to it. And back in 2016, Matt Forney was going around telling people you can be an alpha male in the Philippines. If I'm not mistaken, it was none other than Hell by the Cuckboard Light who claimed Matt Forney's a really good looking guy. And it just goes to show you, I'll have folks that in the comments, they start berating you and they say, Goldberg, you gotta listen to TFM, you gotta listen to Hell by the Cupboard Light. And you say, cool, I'm willing to try different content. You uh, gander over there and give it a watch. And it just seems as though you're not inside Arkham Asylum. It's Arkham Asylum, the extra protection ward. And the person in charge is solo TV. I mean, it's just brutal. I don't know what to tell you. I guess we just have to move on. Obviously, some of the messages these guys put out are pretty silly. 
the way they're trying to market the lifestyle overseas, like, there's all these traditional feminine conservative women just waiting to sleep with you after 30 minutes. Well, maybe they're not actually conservative, but hell, I can't judge. It's just a typical fashion of men to project values on women. So if you match with that girl on a dating app and she's not a Stacy, you might start thinking she's a good girl. She's different from all the others, which maybe she is, maybe she's not. Or being a good girl went from untouched by man to low notch count. That's the way that it's being termed. But it's interesting. Let's say you compare a girl that hooked up with two guys in college, future Manosphereans. So that session was probably less than three minutes, to be perfectly honest, followed by them crying. Not the woman, the man. Or a chick that was in an LTR but did every nasty thing with that boyfriend. Who's really the good girl? open for debate. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think. Or there's the image of the girl in the grass skirt with the coconuts up top, but of course when she sees you the coconuts pop off like in the cartoons. And But by the way, under that grass skirt it's perfectly manicured and coiffed and care of, groomed, even though she's traditional and conservative, because otherwise you'd end up like one of the Three Stooges. Ah, shoot it! That's a tarantula! <laughs> And then once she spots you, the first thing she does, she begins dancing in a circle around you and says, American passport, American sub five. What can you do? I'll be perfectly honest. Many of the girls I've seen with passport bros were not terribly impressive. There are some exceptions. Usually it's in the five or six range. I don't want to sound elitist. I can get fives and six on American dating apps. But maybe if you're used to twos and threes, it's enough of an upgrade to justify it. I just would want at least a six or seven if you're going to geomax. I think it makes more sense. But as to will these guys ruin everything, there's a couple of factors you have to keep in mind. One is that inflation could worsen. And if it does, especially the guys that don't have a lot of resources to begin with, the ones who work at Popeye's and live with their mama, Unless they get a payday loan, they're not going to be able to travel anymore. Obviously, Scamarona 2.0, Global War, those could put a damper on really everyone, but it'll make it harder, especially if you don't have a reason to be traveling. This is why I talk about finding a job overseas, having a reason to be there as opposed to just you know, trying to be touristy. You also might see it occur that locals begin cracking down if they don't appreciate the behavior. You can be disappeared pretty easily, even if you're an American citizen. They could make it look like an accident. This is why I say, especially to those of you who travel alone, don't get drunk and be careful about taking drinks that aren't, let's say, out of a sealed bottle because they can try to use you as a way to make a quick buck. You might not wake up from that ordeal. That's just a you know, suggestion, but you don't have to follow it. Ultimately, if you're concerned about passport bros ruining things, you just have to ask, are you someone capable of being adaptive or creative? Most of these dudes, the ones making asses of themselves overseas, they're normies. So they're trying to find the five minute takeaway. All right, I go here, get off the plane, take a taxi, start waving cash around pay for an expensive pro and go home and brag about it on the internet or Instagram, whatever it might be. If you want to follow the same track record that they have, you're going to be ripped off or you may have a difficult time. Those who say, all right, let me investigate districts of the city, which are more local centric, maybe the suburbs, countries that a lot of these dudes, because I've heard them discuss geography and it's quite amusing, don't even know about. Notice, I don't mention to people specifically where I've been. I'm broad, I'm generalistic. Why? Because I don't like to attract a whole uh, truckload of normies because they're gonna watch a video of this nature simply because it says passport and they have no appreciation. I also believe if you're gonna travel overseas, especially if you've never been to a country, try to learn from the locals, pick up some of the language, Go there and see sites as well, the history, have an appreciation for it. Don't just be the idiot who is looking for an easy pump and dump. And that's pretty much how I've lived my life on an experiential basis. Research, observation, learning from others, all crucial. You don't have to walk blindly into a minefield. At the same time, the experience of one person 
may vary to the next. So I like to get out there, whether it's with particular job fields, uh, investments, or travel, and see where do I stand? Because I've had, I've heard the messages, well, Europe is terrible. I went to Europe over the summer, honestly, didn't seem bad at all. And I was there for a brief period of time. I'm a relatively sociable person. I will note, I stay away from Americans when I'm in other countries. There were a couple of Pujas in the tropical part of Europe I probably could have talked to, but I was like, I'm, I pretend to be either European or sub-European Slav, that kind of thing. It just makes it easier, and you, you tend to interact with more interesting folks than you will if you talk to Americans who are loud, obnoxious, and boisterous. I'll put it on my credit card. With that being said, don't fall into the trap of conditioning yourself too much by headlines. Well, this guy said, maybe it's true, and maybe you'll find the same thing, or perhaps not. You know, like, I have this Croatian friend, and he was raving about Japan being great. He was like, and some people say, it's hard to date there. I'm sorry you have that problem. I was like, exactly. There's this tendency for folks to assume that what they have come across is necessarily the same. And you will encounter a measure of variation. So it's just a question of, can that be enough of a motivating factor? Would you rather simply not try? 